Recording, yeah. Recording in progress. <laughs> it says, well done, Robbie, you saved the day here. I'm telling you. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> to be honest, I'm not functioning at the moment. I'm still not really. The tea. The middle of the night for you, isn't it? <sighs> it's still dark outside. Um, um, right, hang on. Mm. I've right, been just, doing you for 11 so, years. <laughs> so just, just this, this to me, you, you nutshelled that very succinctly and, and perfectly in, in my, in my mind is, is that Murdoch is not a scoundrel who just appeared and then just, just happened to end up controlling half of the world's media. He's the latest in a succession of these people. Of course, and you, you know, if you ever look at his corporate structure. He okay. is a he is a majority he has a majority holding of a minority holding of a minority holding of a minority holding of a minority holding of, you know um, to control the whole of News Corp around the world right right okay and so he he exists at the at the pleasure of his creditors <laughs> okay. Um, okay why don't they ever pull the plug why don't they ever pull the like there was a, there's a lot of financial power that could bring Murdoch to his knees okay if he wasn't wasn't serving their interests mm -hmm. why don't they ever pull the plug right um his relationship one of the more just in a small example he's, he had this relationship with um one of the saudi princes okay uh uh tell uh tell walid or something the richest man in saudi arabia uh who who was named in a lot of the investigations around the, the relationship between the saudis and 9 11. okay um this <laughs> given Murdoch's Islamophobia and all those sort of things that he mediated in the war on terror, et cetera, this, this is, he could have had a field day with this, Yeah. but yeah. his media is promoting all sorts of stuff in, in relation to Islamophobia, right. but he had, he gets away with these kind of deep business ties. Mm. Um, and you know, it's just, I just see him as a tool of the establishment. 100%. Right. And of course you mentioned, Propaganda when, when, as you said, when when propaganda was still a, a, an acceptable term, and of course this all harks back to to Freud's nephew, Bernays, uh, and yep. the, the the father of PR, who told American yep. women you can all smoke, it's very fashionable, darlings, yep. and, and and also that the, the Guatemala, one of the first coups, well the first recorded coups uh, and accepted as such, the Guatemala United Fruit Company thing. And this was, they employed Bernays to do this in the same way that they are now employing people like Murdoch to do exactly the same thing. Uh, and, and the big one, of course, was the, um, uh, in my view, uh, what I regard as the war crime of the 21st century, the Iraq war could never have happened without the Murdoch press. Right. It would have been, it just would, they, they it felt like it, the things that the Murdoch press had to do to help orchestrate that war and right. attack, bitterly, brutally attack anyone who opposed it, um, especially in the, the in the UK front was the worst yeah. for that. Um, yeah. the, the Lib Dems leader, whatever his name, I forget his name, Kennedy. Charles, Charles yeah, Kennedy, Charles Kennedy, and the and the, the target graphic, you know, these people all traded this this sort of thing, classic Murdoch, but. Boy was and, and 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 then you find out later, you know, he's participating in these, uh, you know, project for the new American century or whatever they were. PNAC, uh, yeah. In the, in the lead up to nine eleven, that was planning all. You know, it's just extraordinary. And then you, that's when you see it at its worst. That that's a bunch of jots. It's, it's a bunch. Of, it's it's not working. It's still not. That's a whole bunch of dots that you've just joined there, Robbie. Nine eleven, the PNAC. Murdoch, the media, propaganda, the program for the new American century, and Iraq. And Anna, you mentioned Iraq also at this point. You want um, to jump in there? Yes. I thought it was... Um, oh, right. I, I thought it was really terrifying when it, when it happened. After 9-11 um, happened, um, the stop the war actually did something good they put on some meetings cnd the campaign for nuclear disarmament which was supposed to have been a partner disappeared uh -huh. did absolutely nothing right. 
So there was no one publicizing this stuff. So I stepped in and did the press and I was just told very odd things by various people in, um, in the left. Uh, they don't take any notice of us. You shouldn't be doing this. It's the bourgeois press. <laughs> don't do it. So I ended up no CND helping, no trade union PRs. And obviously they, the trade unions have the, um, have the resources. Mm -hmm. It ended up myself and one other, um, somebody called Mike Marcusy, who was, who was writing a, a lot of the, the press releases. Doing this, it was just so weird. And you were up against, you know, at the same time you had Alistair Campbell, who, and the writing the dodgy dossiers the sex up yep. dossier yeah yeah it was very and, and can, can, can i say i was very really shocked recently shocked but strangely uns, strangely unsurprised to, to see john mcdonnell now very friendly with alistair campbell who has been rehabilitated on the left it seems the I'm whole shocked. thing was really weird and strange and i think distinctly dodgy Again, a series of dots uh, again joined, as far as I'm concerned, uh, Campbell, that the Iraq thing, which I, I agree with you, Robbie, it, it's the crime of the century, that what, what, what was done. And, what, and then you had Libya, of course, and, and et cetera. Um, Campbell, now, as you say, Anna, has just been kind of readopted by the left. What, what happened to the left? Because you had Corbyn, who, who was no good to the establishment. I'm anti-war, I'm anti-weapons, I'm anti-nuclear. How can they make any money out of this guy? He, he's not going to go with it, is he? So he had, well, to, be, he had to be destroyed. And yes. You had the lobby. But, yes, but he had, he had the chance. You know, why was it that up until 9-11, he had been um, a backbench MP, okay. I don't know, 20 odd years. He was known in certain small circles, you know, as being um, a leftist M MP, mm. progressive, mm. anti-racist, and the rest of it. So, so he got, you know, he happened to be prominent at at that time. Mm. Um, so sorry, it's late, and I've lost my thread. You're going to edit this bit out. <laughs> Don't worry, I'll, I'll make it look as smooth oh, as possible. I, I should edit right. myself out, is what I should do. So, so we got Corbyn, Corbyn as anti war. Anti oh, I'm yeah. sorry. Yeah. Right. If you're familiar with the, the Marvel Universe, you'll know <laughs> yeah. I think one of the Iron Man films has a character called the Mandarin, uh -huh. who's played by um, ben, wow. ben Kingsley. Yeah. 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 Ben yeah. Kingsley. And if you remember how that goes, they created me. What the twist is in the yeah. end? Oh, I'm just Tony from the East End. You know, <laughs> in fact, J Jeremy's from quite a posh, a posh background. Uh. I'm reminded of him. I'm reminded of El Cid. The at the end of the movie, the corpse is lashed to the horse, uh. and they slap the horse and they send the horse into battle so that the troops think that they have El Cid at the head of of the um you know of, of their at attack on the evil mahdi um so i am skeptical because of what i've seen okay. i think he he's never going to have power now so he can right. say whatever right. he wants and um, the meaningful thing to me about corbin is actually what his followers, what his admirers are projecting onto him, because that's right. what's important. Because okay. they need hope, they need a figure. Yeah. yeah. So I, you know, I'm sort of, well, I won't say happy, but I'm content to just let this one ride out because people need something. Mm. But given what happened before, what what I saw, the the way it, um, the way it all panned out, I just have my doubts and like i've said before wheels within wheels i think you know he's probably very um sincere but there are certain things i've i've observed robbie i'll send you i'll send send you the link to to to, to what i've written about about this period
So my fear, my great upset, is I feel the British working and middle classes, the proletariat, have nobody defending them. Look at this on, on China. Who's been saying anything about it? Now you can say, okay, but he's he's been, you know, had the whip taken away from him and that, but he could say something. In Australia, you have you have prominent figures who are fighting this corner. And you know, I'm afraid he he's done he's done other things, like on the very day that the, the Chinese in, in Britain had uh a protest against the border border control having fishing raids, fish, fishing raids into the Chinese community to try and, and find, you know, illegal immigrants. He was um, starting his campaign, which was like a British MAGA, which was made in Britain. And he was campaigning against, um, you know, foreign workers it seemed to me I mean maybe someone can put a you know a, a, a more subtle nuanced spin on that but that seemed to me to be the bottom line and all sorts of things mm. Robbie can I say just two things about that I think the first is what what you're illustrating for me um Anna is a phenomenon I see a lot where from a distance a political figure can look exceptionally good especially when they're see they're same, seemingly so different to everybody else because from a distance means you know the other side of the world from australia jeremy corbyn really stood out like a beacon but of course the closer you are you see you see the flaws and the warts and all right. etc and and it's, and it's a little bit different and i so i understand um the skepticism that you're expressing i think one of the weaknesses that corbyn um does have and this is a very delicate thing, and then this is this is where my friendship with uh, Jack James comes into it. What the Anglo-Americans have done, especially the Americans, better than anybody, is weaponize human rights. Okay, it's entirely hypocritical, but it's a it's a difficult thing to argue, mm -hmm. right? So because um, they're suddenly they're now concerned about the welfare of Muslims in Xinjiang. Mm -hmm. And of course, China deals with its issues in its own way, and it's very protective of its sovereignty. Mm. And it doesn't care if it wants to, if it decides it's going to control information, it's going to control information. That doesn't mean that that um, they're, they're doing what they're accused of, right? Mm, but mm, mm. someone like Corbyn, who's made such an issue of human rights, um, I know, and I know this applies to to, to um, Russia as well. Um, it's a weakness where they actually are susceptible to the human rights attacks and arguments against China and Russia, right. because they want to be seen to be all we get. Yeah, we are the consistent champions of human rights. Yeah. Um, they should be braver to, to say, well, hang on, <laughs> come on. The people saying this are liars. <laughs> there's human rights and there's human rights. And there's HRW exactly. who take a backhander to say whatever exactly. they're told to say exactly. by Soros. Exactly, and they and but they but they they they're, they're actually quite weak on it, yeah. and so a party like us, we, you know, we care about human rights as much as anybody, but we're mm. not going to be cowed into accepting human rights fakers. Robbie, claims. why aren't you? Why aren't you the prime minister of Australia? <laughs> oh well, because <laughs> I didn't get elected. <laughs> Short answer. And I can't think of anybody better. If the Labor. If the Labor Party, um, I, I sometimes tell people, if the Labor Party hadn't it lost hadn't. its way um, decades ago, I might have been in the Labor Party instead of the, the Citizens Party. We, right. you know, the two major parties. There's very little room for um, uh, truly independent thinking right. uh, within those parties. So if you're gonna if you're gonna be a party like if you're gonna express what I express, I don't think I'd get away with doing it in the party, and that's why uh, yeah. you do it you have your own party right but, yeah. and but but we've been going for a long time um it's just that we have a certain view uh, it's funny how we came to this china issue we just we just think credit where it's due china needs a china deserves a lot of credit for actually the progress it's made yeah. um i sometimes joke you know if, if china's so evil that that it has to 
disguise its evil by doing only good things, then <laughs> yeah. at a certain point it must become good, right? <laughs> um, all, this economic development and actually living to a of poverty, its goal, you know, its goal is moderate prosperity. Think yeah. about what that means. Moderate pro that's an amazing thing. Instead of, yeah. oh yeah, we're gonna yeah. we're gonna have the world's richest man. No, that's yeah. not their yeah. goal. Their goal is moderate prosperity for all. Balance. Right? Um, yeah. Exactly. And that's that should be admired. Yeah. And instead it's being demonized and say so when we, we were happily observing the good that was coming that was that 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 was coming out of China and, and the, the Chinese were achieving. And then yeah. suddenly it's going to be demonized. So yeah. then a party like yeah. us says, no, nah, we're going to speak out against it. Yeah. Brave of you. I, um, can I, I, I'd like to, I'd like to pose a question which I, I, I'll let you cogitate on. Given, given we've, we've talked about the media propaganda, the control of everything and how, how it is one gang and how Murdoch has been just another in a long succession of these people who are, all in the same gang, given the, the, the money's control over social media, Facebook, Twitter, etc. You say yourself, Robbie, Anna, I know you are also pretty much independent, you know, independent because you, you, you have no choice. If you join this gang, you've got to, you've got to say what this gang says. What chance what are the possibilities for the future when when the money controls what people think what people hear what people say what, what, where's where's the way out of this this is this is for me because we all we all talk about this we all know what's going on we we, we and we we're, we're kind of in this echo bubble where we we're, we're contained i for example on twitter i know i can say something and, and i get a few people who agree and that's fine how do I get out of this and, and reach more people when, when it is contained? This, for me, is, is the prime question. Is, is the media, the control of the media, propaganda, the money controlling well, there, it? There is that, but there's also incredible sectarian um, divisions, you know, that, that have, have quite shocked me because I thought everyone was going to come together and you keep, you know, you keep amplifying each other. Mm. And instead I'm seeing turf wars, I'm <laughs> seeing outright prejudice because obviously as a Chinese person and as a woman um, from Acne, you, you know, I think um, Asian women are like the lowest on the rung at the right. moment. Right. And, and I, 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 so for example, I will say something that I think is fairly insightful. And I've been writing about this stuff for 20 years. You know, it's all on my website, um, Mad, 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 Madam Meow. I'll put all the links and, in at the end. Okay. And, and, and it, it just gets ignored. And not only that, but I feel I'm completely ghettoized. Mm. I'm effectively silenced. I mean, you've seen... Uh, who engages with me and who shows kindness and solidarity and you can see quite easily who who doesn't mm. so uh, this just doesn't doesn't help and the fact that there are how many chinese people talking about pol the politics and the current geopolitical um mess that we're in yeah you know i feel absolutely shoved in this ghetto where um there's like a hierarchy that has developed now mm. and this is just awful this this can't bloody work and, and this um, anna you're talking about you're talking about for example uh, the twitter sphere if you like uh, as as just as a as a, a microcosm of this yeah yeah it, it's incredible you find your stuff turning up in other people's ideas now i don't mind that because it's cross fertilization yeah. it's a hive mind mm. we should all be passing on ideas that then get mm. amplified right but instead it's like it's like a, i feel it's a microcosm of what's happening with china it's like oh you're fine while, while we can exploit you and suck the goodness <laughs> out of you and all the nutrition mm. but we're not going to put anything back we're certainly not going to let our followers know you even exist yeah. And I just find that bizarre. If you're looking at racism and the fact that 
people's critical f uh, faculties have collapsed so quickly and people wow. have been, mm. been um, accepted this demonization of Asians and Chinese mm. as if we have no inner life. Mm. We, we, we don't exist as, as, as thinking and feeling human beings. And then you get people coming up who are supposed to be pro-China and they're doing the exact thing. They're stripping you of your humanity. Mm. It means people aren't seeing Chinese people as normal mm. and mm. In, engaging so we we remain a mystery and mm. when you're a mystery mm. in a black blank canvas that means anything can and will be projected onto on you, to you. Yeah, by, to you. you know so absolutely so, so we, cool. you, you you hit a nail on the head for me Anna. um this this thing about I've lost it. Hang on, it's coming back. We're tired. Okay. It's the We're... Can I say something? I... Robbie, go on. Okay, I just uh, look, I'm glad you expressed it that way, uh, Anna, because it's. Uh, what I found I was having a conversation the other day with a um, a former New Zealand cabinet minister that I brought to Australia to do some meetings in Parliament. Um, we met some embassy people, etc., and he was he was telling me about in very enthusiastic terms about a. Um, uh, a, a particular ethnic community that he works with in New Zealand who are really, really well organised and really effective at um, uh, doing political things. Okay. I, I don't want to mention the name of the community. And anyway, I said to him, he's, he's, he's giving me, me this description in glowing terms because he's basically saying I should work with them as well. Okay. And I said, you know, I'm listening to this and I'm thinking, um, this is if if the government ever decided to target that community that you're talking about, they could take everything you've just said that you're saying is a positive and twist it mm. into a complete negative and everyone would fall into line and, and the prejudice would start flowing because it shocked me how quickly and, and your story going back to the foot, foot and mouth disease was, was a big surprise but for me it shocked me just how quickly it's like a tap was turned in australia right four years ago right and and so suddenly what the Muslim community experienced for 15 years yeah. was turned yeah. off and was turned onto the Chinese community. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. And these and 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 they are completely marginalized. Um, they cannot, they're not allowed to speak for themselves, right? Mm. Because no one's gonna listen. Oh, of course you control this this evil person named Clive Hamilton wrote a, he's a lefty academic. In 2018, he wrote this book <laughs> called Silent Invasion. Uh. And he alleges in the book that 30 to 40 percent of the Australian Chinese population are loyal to Beijing. So in whatever invasion is going to happen, they're going to rise up. Like, and they had no evidence for it whatsoever. Mm -hmm. And this is the sort of thing that was targeted to the Chinese community. And so you got violence on the streets, right. that sort of thing. And you can see how they turn it and they can't speak for themselves. But the good news is, <laughs> the good news is in this last election, although the outcome hasn't been, has been a bit, you know, in terms of the, the flow and it's been a bit disappointing. Okay. Everyone acknowledges that the, the difference, the change of government came about because the Australian Chinese community changed the way they vote en masse. All right. Because they still get a vote. And because they were, it was about 60, they, their voting was about 60 to 70% liberal because Chinese people tend to be business people. Mm. They just want to get on with business, et cetera, right? Yeah. So they voted for the conservative government. They just got sick of it. And, and, the community as a whole just switched their vote to Labor. And right. in, the, in all those key seats, Labor won. Now, a tiny handful of people are trying to demonize that. Oh, look, see, see, see what they can do. But the majority of people, even the majority of the media, they actually, so far, the reaction has been, oh, this is a reality check. Uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> maybe, maybe we did go too far. Uh -huh. So as, as silenced as they were, unable uh -huh. to speak for themselves, that, that, that their, their, their efforts at the ballot box worked. <laughs> Now yeah. I'm hoping I'm hoping we can pull up, break open the debate so that mm -hmm. there, there there's actually outcomes from that that we can force this Labor government to actually deliver things to change the to change the dynamic. But to me that was a little bit heartening at least because I understand the the yeah. pain otherwise that Anna's expressing. Vote vote with the feet. So so that's that's a situation in Australia which has demonstrated that that people will eventually. God bless them. <laughs> Vote with their feet. Anna, Anna, could can 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 something similar happen in in, in London in the UK? I don't know. Uh, the uh, the last um, census there was something like um, four hundred. I think over four hundred thousand Chinese 
in Britain, but where are they? You don't see us, we're invisible. There are no newscasters, no politicians. I, I think there was one Tory um, uh, politician and there's there's a, there's a, a Labour one now um, who is, you know, on Hong Kong, you can imagine the, the, the stand. So, um, most of them, Chinese tended to be Labour voters here. Okay. I think more okay. more than more than to Tory. So I I I think everyone's just been um, sort of completely flummoxed by this, taken by surprise. It's like there's no logic, is there? It's like why would you? damage your own economy because that's very much what this policy is is doing just as right. it did in australia you know you're destroying your, your your economy um access to those huge production scales that that china is capable of that means we haven't experienced inflation in a mm -hmm. in a generation mm -hmm. and and suddenly it's like oh inflation's going up well i wonder why that is then um so I think the Chinese here are more likely to vote Labour mm. next mm. time. But the problem is, you know, it's like Lawrence Ferlinghetti's poem, A Bird with Two Right Wings. You know, it's like yeah. the, the Republicans yeah. and the Democrats. Over, we've got the same dance that goes on, you know, between mm. one and another. I think that's that's the threat that Jeremy Cor Corbyn was because yeah. he, you know, that his presence threatened to, to, to break break that um chinese here i think are much quieter than in um australia we, ha we have a lot of people from hong kong obviously coming over here so i don't know if if that's and going our, to our community you said four hundred thousand. our community is actually very large by comparison it's, a, it's yeah. at least one and a half million in a country of 25 million wow. yeah. This is yeah the biggest community ethnic community in the country mm. and so that's why they were able to have make that difference. I, I yeah. just based on your numbers, I don't think you'd you'd make as much of a difference. Other people have to speak up, see it for what it is, and speak up. And you mentioned Huawei. I think the Huawei it, that was also striking to us the yeah. resistance in the UK to going along with the Huawei decision. Um, so whatever, I still I'm not, I'm still not clear why because you know um, usually. Uh, uh the the brits and the americans are uh as one on these things um uh but but so maybe there's something there that there are people in high places saying you know come on i mean you did invite xi jinping to your country whatever yeah. year that was to do all those deals etc under cameron but did you notice also david cameron and osborne whose legacy was the the the, the golden age with china suddenly there are all these um, news reports of Green D D David Cameron's involvement with a company called Green Sill, and it was mm, supposed yeah, to yeah. be dodgy. So again, it's the tap being turned on. It's like, well, if you're not going to, you know, to play ball, we're going to, you know, concentrate all our fire onto you. And then Osborne, because he was, um, he he'd worked as he went to, to be an editor for, or the editor with the Evening Standard, owned by. Evgeny, Evgeny, um, what's it, a Russian anyway. So, so you have all the dirt that started to be dished on on them. Um, they can, they tell, they get into line. <laughs> and, and 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 the same same with Boris Johnson. I think on China, he yes, he did send war warships off the coast of China, but I, it just felt to me like he was doing the bare minimum to keep America mm -hmm. happy. And I, I assume, you know, this, this is, this is just, just me, my deduction that he, he had um, not been enthusiastic enough, not like some of the others, what we're seeing, like Liz Truss, oh, <laughs> she'll love it. And if you look who's, who's behind her as well, but basically, they're being shut up if, if they don't have this consensus opinion. I think Five Eyes is a very significant um, uh, operation. And, and uh, it, sometimes it has to work hard to, to bring the politicians into any country in line. But if you look at, say, the way Sir Richard Dearlove has um, switched to prosecuting the, the China issue 
massive way, especially all the lab leak bullshit. And if I'm allowed yeah. to say that, yeah. Um, you know, the, the, the five eyes demonization of China, that's what's driven it in Australia. Right. right? I, I, I suspect they might've had to work overtime to get the, um, the British politicians into life. You know, maybe the reason they they were reluctant on Huawei is because hello, Huawei is so damn good and cheap. Why wouldn't you want it in your, in your system? Mm. Right. Um, and some, and, and, and then they're being told not to. So I do think the, there is that part of the, the British establishment that's very much in lockstep always, but the politicians have to be um, brought along. You have uh, one of our concerns is this inter-parliamentary alliance on China. And yeah, so yeah, there, sure. it's led, there it's led by Ian Duncan. Oh. Oh. And, but the one that blows my mind is Baroness Helena Kennedy. Oh, yeah. Who yes. I met, who I met yeah. with once. This is, this is this human rights mafia rubbish. I'm sick of it right yeah. um she she is in bed with i know the australian counterparts they're vicious okay these are yeah. arch sinophobes these are mccarthy these are yeah. straight out of the mccarthy playbook and i can't believe that woman with mm -hmm. that supposed commitment to human rights and all that is is happy to be in bed with these people mm. new, right? line. New, new, new line new line new new line is it the the um uh the outfit where they all had, had to go go at, at the, Xinjiang. The fake, the fake university. Yeah. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. No, it, it's just it's so the, so the the Ian Duncan's that that crowd. The the other one is the Henry Jackson Society, and that is yep. British. And yep. it blow like this crowd, yep. this organisation. Mm -hmm. I mean, my goodness. Yep. Um, they if anyone eats babies for breakfast, it's that lot. White supremacy. <laughs> and, <laughs> absolutely absolutely the henry jackson society people people don't these societies um the, the the freedom house the henry jackson society it's one gang it's one gang and and then then you got the ipac and and of course you have people like marco rubio who is part of the ipac yeah it, it, and and you look at all the bills that are drafted the human rights bills his name is his name is on them He's pushing but he had down. no respect. I remember for ages, Rubio was just regarded as a, 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 a right wing. Little Marco. You know, yeah. E yeah. E extre extremist and, and not very well respected. And suddenly these people have whole new careers. It's like they've rebranded themselves as these yeah. monsters. Follow the money. Follow the money. Yeah. So back to back to the which for me is, is the sixty four million dollar question. Can I say, just to answer yeah. that question, I have yeah. one other perspective on it. So for us in yeah. Australia, I think I think what's been a bigger reality check than anything is that that's got the population more thoughtful is once it was couched in the language of war. Okay. And that's what that was. That's what the shift was in the election. The, 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 the liberals were so desperate to, to get back in. They just started talking about we're, we're preparing for war right. and all these sinophobic, now, but, now, when I say sinophobic, there's a general sinophobia in Australia. But in 2016, 2017, 40 percent of Australians would say they're suspicious of China. Mm -hmm. They think China is a threat. Now it's 80 percent, and that's a that's a rapid shift in four years, right? And that's been that's been the result of all this propaganda. But those people, they never took the idea of war seriously. Mm. And suddenly, 2022 comes along, and it, and our leaders, our defence minister, mm. are ta are talking war. Yeah. And it's like, oh, hang on. Well, hang on. <laughs> uh, it's one thing to not want China to come in and buy up our, our assets. Not that China was doing it very much, but that's the sort of thing that's weaponized. Yeah. Or hang on. Wait, 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 what are we talking about war for? Yeah. Um, and that I'm hoping that we see a, a um, that play out where more and more people are willing to say, okay, if, we, if war is unthinkable, then let's rethink everything that leads to that. Yeah. Yeah, you know the, the road to war is always paved with lies. So that's um, that's how I hope we get we'll get out of the echo chamber. Okay, uh, <clears throat> but 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 there's this to quote the well-worn phrase cognitive dissonance where you're saying look at what's happening, look at what's about to happen. As Anna, one of Anna's phrases, the light at the end of a tunnel is is the train coming towards you, and you can hold this up to people. So, do you, can you see? I left you. I left the UK in 2014. Ukraine. I, I see what was. I thought that's it for me. Enough. I'm. I'm out. 
and of course it played out recently um, and you can hold these things up and it's like people they don't want to see they refuse to see M um, one of my big big arguments is look look at the development of China for example how much they've achieved it gets done stuff gets done stuff get happens the high-speed rail network just as an example and then I say well okay imagine what your country could do <laughs> with all the money that they're plowing into things that blow yeah. up and explode and kill people if they put that into your country instead of doing this do the maths of course yeah no, that's the argument yeah <laughs> that's the but don't you think that they they, they think they're going to have another opium wars. They're going to partition China. Um, going back to, you know, Churchill wanted wanted this, this done. They're going to, you know, especially as we now have a, a change of monarch. Um, it's a new era. There are things that have to be proved. You, you know, um, I think striking out and trying to, to make an identity for themselves, certain parties. So they they also think, yes, it costs a lot of money to wage a war, but some 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 people think think that this is um, going to pay off because they're going to, to make a fortune once they've carved up China, have got all their assets, you know, they've got their puppet governments in in place. I mean, I, I think it's weird, it's fantasy, but I think America's aim, to me, it all comes down to this. America wants to do to the world what it did to North America and it did to the Native Americans and to um, Black people in, in slavery. And I think they think, well, we did it once. Look, we won the whole of North America. We can do this to the world. If only that pesky Russia and China <laughs> aren't in the way it's going to be clear for us to do this. And I hope and I suspect people outside our um, Anglo bubble are, are seeing this and realizing that's their future. You look at what happened to the Native Americans and that is the future they have designed and planned for you. I've seen, I've seen recently um, trending, as they say on, on Twitter, uh, the words general strike. Uh, applied to America and, and I'm wondering if if really the, the power as we used to say in, in the UK the power of the pound in your pocket um, if, if the machine is stopped by for example something like a general strike uh, Anna you remember February 20 the general February, strike yes you remember, you remember February 2003 and, and and there were millions Robbie you would remember of course as well millions in cities all around the world who demonstrated we don't want you to do this thing mm -hmm. Iraq we don't want you to do this it was clear there were millions of people in cities around the world yeah they still went ahead yeah how do you stop the machine general strike well, there's a different. I have a slightly different perspective on on the um, machine because I think one of the things that are, that the people in America, and I know I know a whole, I I work with people in America. I have for a long time um, through the Schiller Institute, 